Good morning. This is the Ramblings of an Indiscipline Mind podcast for Saturday, December 5th, 2015. It's another video episode today. I thought I would share with you the man cave. So I'm going to give you a little tour of the man cave. So I'll give you a quick panoramic view here of the main cave first so you can kind of get the, the overall effect of it. And then we'll go through and I'll kind of give you the, the five cent tour. So to start with, right here at the entrance, right here at the door, I've got a speed bump cartoon, which is one that used to be in the lo local paper here. Could still be, I don't know, I don't get the local paper anymore, but I did enjoy them kind of in a far side kind of way. And a friend of mine named Darren, he, had, he knew the, uh, the um, creator of this. And so he said, pick a cartoon and uh, I'll get one signed for you. So I looked around and I liked this one. And uh, so I got that signed and personalized. So that is hung up here right by the door. So that's pretty cool. Also right here by the door, so I can grab them when I'm going out or coming in, are my collection of hats, or part of my collection of hats. These are just the hats that I'm wearing right now. I have a couple on each hook. It's good to, good to have hats available to wear when you've got my lack of hairstyle. Over here next to it, I've got my Enterprise D poster, which is uh, not showing up terribly well due to glare. Maybe we'll try it from this side. Yeah, it's not much better. Anyway, this is a poster I've had for years. It's been in the basement, the, um, and, and it wasn't looking very good, but I got, a, I got a new frame for it, and it looks sharp. I really like having it there, so that's my bit of Star Trek there. Over here is my work desk. So this is my work computer here. And no, I'm not working, but it's there. Oh, that looks funky. So the, here's where I work. You can see out the window there, that's my view. It's a very nice view. I enjoy looking out at it uh, so far already. Uh, also right here off to the side of my desk is I've got my Ed Gizmo works here. The wife uh, made this for me um, in our first year of marriage because uh, where I worked, I made this program that we nicknamed the Gizmo, and then that kind of stuck to me, and then I stuck my middle name in front of it and became a Gizmo. So that's where that came from long before there was an internet. But then when the internet came and you kind of need to be secret in the beginning, I, I, uh, I did that. I used that. So here on my accent colored wall, I've got these two guns. These actually come from my father's collection. They're both of a World War II vintage. The bottom gun is a uh, Japanese gun, and the top gun is a German Mauser. And I believe like the Japanese gun, I don't know if it's gonna show up on camera. I think there's like up in here some place there's some Japanese characters, but I can't really see it offhand. I didn't prepare for that ahead of time, but. But yeah, these, these guns have seen some use. I've never fired them. I think my father did. Um, I think my father did once. Uh, can't let me focus. Um, but the ammo was kind of, was kind of, uh, kind of expensive. So we never did it again. Uh, oh, there we go. Here's my desk. Here's my main desk. This is where I do work on the podcast. This is where I uh, have written novels or parts of novels. I did a lot of, I spent a lot of time sitting at this desk for NaNoWriMo this year. So I've got a number of things over here. I've got my Larry uh, from VeggieTales. I've got Frank, my puppy. Hello, Frank. How are you doing? My daughter gave him to, to me. Uh, that's, he's one of my favorite, favorite things there. Um, here's some of the stuff from the loot crate, uh, including the box that I, I kind of got set up. I couldn't quite get it right, but I've got it set up enough. But the, you know, you can see Vault Boy again, and and there was this little guy. I don't think I showed him very well in the last video because he's kind of he's he's kind of he kind of tilts forward a little bit in order to really get the full effect of the mask. You kind of got to do that. See that. I realized when I was watching that video that I didn't show that very well. So there you go. There's your second peek at that. I think he's a really cool character, but you got to kind of view him from the right angle. 
over here off to the side is my Japanese collection. I've always had an interest in Japanese artifacts and Japanese art uh, from when I was really young. And so, oops, finger over camera, not good move. So I started collecting all this stuff and it's been sitting in a box in the basement for the last 15 years. And so this is an old AV cabinet that I turned into a curio cabinet. And it's, it's fun to be able to, to show these things again. And then these swords that are here, the top one is a replica Cantana that I purchased many years ago, probably 30 years ago or so, uh, just because of my affinity for Japanese things and I liked it. It, it uh, has a surprising edge on it, I discovered. I was actually looking at it kind of closely in relation to something that I uh, was thinking of using for the novel that I wrote in November. And I was surprised. I remember that it had a good point, but I didn't remember it having much of an edge. And while it's not sharp, really, it's, it comes to more, it's got more of an edge than I would have thought if you whacked it at somebody hard enough. You probably cut them. The bottom sword is from my father's collection again, and that is an authentic World War II uh, Japanese officer sword. It's had kind of a rough life. Uh, the sword is rather nicked in a couple places, so I, I kind of wonder about uh, what its story is. I kind of I like to think about that sometimes. Um, you know, before all I know, some farmer used it to cut down a tree, but it, it's it's kind of interesting to to wonder about. And then I've got my my fan up here. Kind of hard to display a fan. I thought getting it mounted to the wall is probably my best bet there. So that's my Japanese collection. I'm really geeked to be able to have this here and um, be able to show it off. That's really great fun stuff for me. I turn on the light every now and then. It looks awesome if I'm here like in the early morning or at night and there's not a lot of light in here other than my desk lights to turn on the lights in this cabinet. It just really pops. It's really cool. Right next to it, we've got something of equal importance. We've got my Xbox uh, station. So uh, there you can see my Xbox avatar and that I'm using the Gizmo name again on Xbox. You know, so what I want to do right across from here is that space below the Star Trek poster. And so what I really want to do is get like some sort of a futon couch or something so that I can sit here on it and play my Xbox. Above it, I got a few of these shelves that I've mounted just to show off some of the cool knickknacks that I've accumulated over the years. So I've got this Pez Star Trek Collector Series that I've just never got around the opening. It's cool. I mean, I know it's numbered. It's, it, there is a number there. You can see it there in that round Pez sticker. You can see a number um, on there. So it is numbered. But, you know, it's probably worth whatever my sister paid for it <laughs> when she bought it. For me, but I've kept it all together. I've got this Enterprise D figurine that was given to me by a friend a number of years ago. Uh, it's not necessarily anything super fancy or expensive, but it's, it's cool to have the D here again and it's kind of looking on its counterpart across the way. Right here, I've got my Mattel Electronics Battlestar Galactica Space Alert game. And this is one of these ones where it's an LED based game and you have to use that slider switch at the bottom there to um, shoot uh, missiles up to prevent Cylon attacks from, from getting you. And, and, and the further away you can hit them, that's the numbering scale there, uh, the more points you get. And so then it would keep score. And then of course you fire using the big red firing button. Great fun. It still works. Uh, I found it uh, in a box six months or so ago. And uh, I can still play that thing. It's rather fun. Over here on this shelf, I've got another collection of stuff. I've got my pirate. Oh, my pirate. i got to have at least one pirate. This one, I believe, is supposed to be um, Keith Richards' character from the third movie, maybe. Third or second. I got it as part of a, a box set with the movie. And so that was fun. Here is my sponge with my sponge number, which I decided to display proudly. Uh, if you don't know what that is, then you need to be reading In Ashes Born by Nathan Lowell. Right next to it, I got the Mockingjay pen from the Loot Crate. And next to that is this beanie whose name is, drum roll please, I don't know if I can show it 
I probably can't. What's his name? His name is Gizmo. So he's my patron beanie. Uh, so he, he was sitting on my desk and now I've got him here with my stuff. Um, so yeah, my patron beanie Gizmo. He's kind of an odd looking little guy, which kind of fits actually. And then behind all this, I've got an eight inch IBM floppy disk that we used to use uh, at work many, many years ago. And in fact, if you, if I zoom in a little bit here, move in a little bit, you can see that this is copyright 92, I think it is. 1992, old stuff, old, old stuff. Uh, and I thought was, I found this in a box when I, when I was moving all my crap in, in here. And I thought, well, that's kind of cool because you don't see those very much anymore. So I'm gonna, I thought I'd, I'd, I'd put that on display. A, a bit of my computing heritage. And up here at the top, I've got my cheese head. I am a Packer fan. I don't know that I showed it, but uh, uh, you know, there I got a Packer thing right over there. Um, there's my Packer uh, cheese head and my sunglasses, which are cool to look at, but kind of a pain to wear. The one thing I forgot to mention over here is, you know, so I got the Packers thing there above the desk. Also above the desk, I've got my 24 Kiefer Sutherland's Jack Bauer picture that I won from a 24 podcast many years ago. I would love to someday be able to meet him and get that signed. That would be cool. Coming back this way past the shelves of awesomeness is my baseball bat. And this is a bat that I got at the Louisville Slugger Museum. And for a, in Louisville, of course, and for a moderate fee, they will make a genuine Keith Hughes official softball bat. Uh, so yeah, I thought I'd display that. It's also very handy. I can always grab it if there's like a, a burglar or something. I can always grab that. And then here, kind of around the, the door, I've got my NaNoWriMo winner certificates. So that is 2008, 2009, 2010 on that side. And then if I come over here, I've got 2012. And then lastly, for 2015, winner for Symphony of Death. My certificate for this year is in place, it is up. And as you can see, if I compare that side to this side, you can see that there's kind of a space right down there. See that space? There's a space with nothing in it. Hmm. Looks like I probably got to do Nano next year too, which is kind of in the plan. And then lastly, we've got the closet, which is not a closet anymore. That's going to be uh, the recording studio, but it's not done yet. So uh, I'm going to save that and make that another another uh, video sometime in the future. When I get it done and, I want, and I'm ready to show that off, then I'll do a video about that. So that was the man cave. I do hope you enjoyed the tour. Um, I will be back on Monday once again in the car and I'll be talking to you then. So be seeing you.